we, the government, um, as the part of the Canadian financial system in charge of federal fiscal policy, have been very mindful of acting in such a way that would create conditions that support the decline in inflation, support creating conditions um, that would make it possible for the bank to act to bring interest rates down. That's Finance Minister Krista Freeland earlier this week saying economic conditions now exist that could support an interest rate cut. The Bank of Canada's next rate decision is coming Wednesday. And new GDP data from Statistics Canada appears to support Freeland's assessment. Growth in the first quarter of the year was just 1.7 percent, well below the 2.8 percent forecast by the Bank of Canada. Then there's inflation, the bank's primary target. For the past four months, inflation has been within the central bank's target range, with the latest number hitting 2.7 percent in April. That's the lowest it's been in three years. The key lending rate has been at 5% now for almost a full year. So what are the chances of a cut this week and how could it impact political parties' fortunes heading into the summer? The Scrum is here to get into that. Marika Walsh is a senior political reporter with The Globe and Mail. Nick Nanos is the chief data scientist and founder of Nanos Research. And Amber Kanwar is a senior anchor at BNN Bloomberg. Hi, everybody. Good to see you. Amber, I'll start with your financial expertise. Tell us what you're expecting Wednesday based on all that data I just threw out there. Well, because of Friday's soft GDP data, it is now officially priced in that come Wednesday, the Bank of Canada will cut its trend-setting interest rate by 25 basis points. Now, I don't want to say it's like 100% priced in, but economists now think that is the most likely scenario given economic data is soft. And it wasn't just the first quarter. They unexpectedly revised the fourth quarter to instead of 1% growth, Oh, actually, it was 0.1% growth. And the quarter before that was a decline. So remember the technical definition of a recession is two back-to-back -back quarters of negative GDP. We basically just skirt that by a decimal point. So growth is weak. And to your point, inflation is weak. This should give the bank all the cover it needs to cut rates. Uh, but of course, there's a lot of questions beyond that. You know, typically when you get rate cutting cycles, there's many rate cuts that come after that. Economists don't think that's what's going to happen this time around. OK, I'm going to follow up with that point in a second. I just want to bring some politics in the conversation. Nick, give us a lay of the land around how Canadians are feeling right now when it comes to issues of affordability and the way in which obviously interest rates have impacted that. Well, you know, the, the top national unprompted issue of concern is inflation. It's been up four points in terms of people's worry about inflation in the last four weeks and uh, people are worried about the rising cost of housing and just paying for the groceries so you know anything that is seen as a relief on this front would be welcome from Canadians because they're just feeling the pinch. Marika how has that I mean uh, how, how do you anticipate that impacts things heading into the summer I mean to Am Amber's point it's point you know we're looking at a quarter basis point mm -hmm. cut it's not it's not necessarily a lot but the sentiment that could impact like this sort of feeling of relief it might impart that that there's more of that to mm -hmm. come could impact politics as well, I think. Absolutely. I mean, I think the short answer is it's complicated because of everything that Amber just signaled about what happens next. But certainly we can't forget that it was a year ago in July, the bank did its last increase and the polls turned heavily and yeah. swiftly against the Liberals, right? So they are absolutely looking for this turn in the narrative to see even a hope. This is part of their equation. This is part of their strategy to even see a hope at any kind mm -hmm. of resurgence revival against Pierre Polyev. So they don't need to see just one rate cut. They need to see more than one, but this would be the start. And it would certainly be something they could talk about at the doorsteps this summer. Amber, uh, back to your original point. What is your sense or what, what are, are economists essentially saying about the uh, possibility of successive cuts? Well, you have to remember, we're not an island. We're really attached at the hip, quite literally, to the U.S., and their inflation picture is not great. So it's unlikely that they're even going to cut rates at all. This matters because this affects the currency start cutting rates too much and the U.S. doesn't, our currency will weaken. And that is not going to play well politically because the consequence of a weaker currency means that things that you buy from the U.S. are more expensive. So it's not going to bring that relief to everyday consumers as many people expect. Um, you know, on the mortgage side, I think that 25 basis points probably won't be enough to bring a lot of people and bring affordability back to the housing market. So again, it doesn't really do that much for homeowners and for those in the business community
community, quite frankly. A lot of them are still reeling from the capital gains uh, tax increase, and that's been the primary focus when it comes to investment, right? They want to see a return on the investment, and now how much they're being taxed on that potential return um, has gone up or will go up when um, that date, June 25th, uh, comes to the fore. And then there's also this larger issue of just like, Our our productivity is lagging. Our GDP per capita, which is also a number that was released on Friday, continues to struggle, especially against the U.S. So all those things are working potentially against the government politically. And I'm not sure that a quarter basis point rate cut is going to be able to offset all of that. Those are such good points, Nick. And and you know better than anyone from surveying Canadians the degree to which, I mean, you talked about inflation. But draw the draw the line for us between the affordability crisis people are facing and the view they have of the federal government and how that has evolved over time. Yeah, well, well, Amber rightly was talking about the fundamentals, but politics is also about how people feel, yeah. you know. And, you know, to Marika's point, you know, the thing is, is that if this is a down, why don't we call it a down payment, a political down payment on potentially more positive news from the Liberals, it will be welcome, even if it's just 25 basis points. You know, the reality is for the Liberals, what would have been worse is if it went up 25 basis <laughs> points, because that would have been another signal that things are not going well. And, you know, right now in the Nano's tracking, you know, the Conservatives had a 20 point advantage four weeks ago. Now the Conservatives only have a 15, I shouldn't say only, 15 is massive, <laughs> a 15 point advantage. And I think the Liberals are probably hoping that they can just narrow the gap a little bit at a time in order to be a little more competitive. It does sort of bring into focus, Marika, like what do the next number of months before the federal election look like? And how does the overall context change versus the the context that prompted the, the polling differential that we're seeing? And by that, I mean like, the Conservatives took off because affordability is such a big issue and they zoned in on it so far in advance of the Liberals. Like if that context does change, and obviously there are big warning signs, as Amber points out, that it won't change substantially anytime soon. But if it does over time, like what does that mean for the Conservatives, for Mm -hmm. example? Yeah, absolutely. What does it mean? Yeah, the Conservatives still think they have many other talking points to go on. I mean, we saw on Friday, for example, Pierre Polyev talking about those per capita GDP numbers that have sort of diverged with the U.S. since, he says, Justin Trudeau came to power. Everything's tied to Justin Trudeau in the Conservative world, and it's all his fault, according to them. But obviously, we know there's other factors at play. The problem for the Liberals is that not only is it all those other numbers that Amber pointed out, but it's also the fact that we are seeing, for example, mortgage renewals in the next two years are still going to be much higher than when they signed. And so there's all these other headwinds that the Liberals are facing, not least of which is just a government that's been there a long time and there is a change sentiment. But no matter what, any piece of good news is a piece of good news for the Liberals. And I don't think if if you see them lower rates that you can argue it any other way. They'll take what they can get. Exactly. I got to leave it there. Thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate the discussion. Amber Canwar, Nick Nanos, and Marika Walsh.